In the 2016 Skyrim modding guide so far, we have created a darker Skyrim world both inside and out. We now include mods that will help light our way. We'll compare wearable lanterns to the newly released Quick Light, then I'll look at the Lanterns of Skyrim and Claire Lux 2015. Hey guys, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel, and in the last two episodes, we've made our Skyrim world much, much darker, and in some cases, almost impossible to see without additional light. You know, outside and inside, we've made it kind of dark. This episode is going to be focused on getting some of the light that we can use, and that will be, you know, wearable lanterns, quick light, Clarilux, and even Lanterns of Skyrim. So we're going to go ahead and go through all of the options and we'll take a look at them, install them, and go through all that good stuff. So let's get started with our first one, and that's of course going to be Wearable Lanterns by the Lord of Modding Chesco. I don't know why I call him the Lord of Modding, I just felt like it right now. It is mod number 17416. It's been around since 2012, and it got an update in 2014. This is a highly customizable lantern that you can wear, front or back, or even carry, and it comes with three different lantern types. Uh, you look at the requirements, Skyrim, of course, Sky UI, SKSE. All right. To acquire the paper lanterns, and that's one of the options, you must have the Dragonborn DLC. All right. And you come down and read it, and you need a craftable, wearable travel lantern. How to get it. And lanterns can be crafted or purchased depending on which one you like to have. Travel lanterns can be purchased at most general goods stores, crafted at a forge, and paper lanterns can be crafted at the forge for firewood, paper, and leather strips. Torch bug lanterns, purchase empty, bug lantern, blah, blah, blah. You can read all this stuff yourself. But features, lantern position, you can either wear it in the back, in the front, you can carry it. It has the MCM menu, which lets you, you know, change a bunch of different stuff. And it's pretty, you know, I hate to use the word immersive, but you can, you know, do a lot of things to make it really immersive. Installation and upgrades. Download with manager. If you're upgrading, follow these instructions. Follow them. Make sure you follow them. And then if you want to uninstall it from your game, follow these instructions. And he's not kidding. Follow those instructions. So let's go into game and we will take a look at wearable lanterns and then we'll come back and install it. So you can see Lydia and I have found a uh, nice dark room. It's midnight or so and the uh, MCM menus popped up. We'll go take a look at that first since it has most of our information. MCM menu, wearable lanterns, general. Now this is going to allow you to change the radius and the brightness on this. So if you don't like some of the settings, you can do that. Lantern position, you have worn back right is the default. Front right and carried left hand. So I'm going to just put it right there for right now so you can see an example. And then mode, you have manual, which will allow you to toggle the lantern using whatever your toggle key. I've already set it to L since it's a light. And then you also have automatic mode. Automatic mode, basically select usage of all lanterns, cannot use toggle lantern, hotkey in automatic mode. Manual lanterns always lit when worn, unless hotkey is pressed. If you wear it and you press the hotkey, it will turn on, press the hotkey again, it'll turn off. Automatic lanterns automatically on in dungeons, caves, at night, off during the day, and in homes. Default is manual okay so if you're playing a stealth character you probably don't want to be using automatic because that will turn on and alert all your enemies where you are so i prefer manual on this go ahead and take that off auto droplet lanterns if you're carrying one in your hand and that was one of the options is carried in the left hand it will automatically drop the lantern if you equip a shield I would suggest taking that off because you drop a lantern, it may provide you light in the area, but you'll have to go back and find your lanterns. And if you're crafting lanterns all the time, it's a pain in the butt. Fuel settings, you can set the travel paper lanterns to use oil and you can buy that at different places or you can craft it using, you know, dwarven oil. And then bug lanterns use pollen. Now if you click these, you will get fuel 
displays and you can check the fuel using a hotkey uh, it'll tell you you know what your fuel level is you know whatever you want to do and then check fuel display it'll give you options on what type of message you want so on the interface and this has to do with the message you get on the fuel using the oil or the pollen come over to interface and you can set all these different things so there you go so that's how you do that so for right now I've got it front right mode is manual toggle the lantern on and off so there's that that looks good now I'm going to go ahead and go into my items and you can see that's actually under wearables I already have a paper lantern a torch bug lantern and a travel lantern so each of them have a slightly different look I'll show you each one in turn there's the paper lantern torch bug lantern and the travel lantern so you can actually see the travel lantern provides a light that is centered on you and that's that's a good thing to note it's a very natural light and not overbearing but you know if you want to change the brightness in the radius you can do that when you hit your L key you heard a little sound and the light slowly goes off but it stays on your inventory if you were to put this on your back hip just so you know turn it back on it'll slowly come on when if you put it on your back hip the light will stay about the same position and if you wear a cloak or something it doesn't affect the light so if you're using cloaks of Skyrim or winter's coming cloaks it will kind of cover up the light but it doesn't affect the light display as far as you know whether you can see it in first person you look down you can see the lantern that's always a neat touch you go back out and there it is I like this one a lot for its immersionness immersion <laughs> immersionness is that a word immersionness for the level of immersion I mean it's really nice Every, all of them have a different look to them when you wear them or don't wear them and activations very simple I like the hotkey portion I'll probably end up using wearable lantern just because it looks so much nicer and the light is very convenient with the hotkey it works just fine so there's wearable lanterns all right so you got an idea of what it does in the MCM menu and all that stuff and how it works so files on this you have basically wearable lantern 3.0 B this is the most recent one done in 2014 if you're upgrading from a previous one such as this you'll need to have that so just read out to upgrade it know what you're doing so go ahead download that with manager we'll go into mod organizer it's pretty straightforward double click to install you see manual you have readme scripts BSA lantern BSA and just remember that the BSA in this case contains all the new meshes so just be aware it does work with SMIM so I would put it after SMIM if you're using it so I checked it out looked at what was in the BSA and you should have no problems and it has an ESP click OK activate it and in testing I found that it worked just fine up above what am I looking for immersive armors I found you know this is probably where I'll start throwing in most of my weapons since these are all texture mods I'll probably start throwing in new items around this area right through here I'll probably end up moving these around a bit too since they'll need to come up but anyways plugins on this you see one down here at the bottom Chesco wearable lantern uh, I ran loot on this it didn't seem to care where I put it I decided since I was going to put it up with kind of the armor stuff I felt that that would be a good place loot had no issues with it right there so that's pretty much you know easy peasy lemon squeezy easy to go and now we move on to the new kit on the block and that is the you know a relatively new mod it was done recently and it's called quick light by TK TK and it's mod number 73473 it was you know relatively do I mean February 13th and today is February 29th so this is a much simpler mod than wearable lanterns it has some advantages what it lacks or what it makes up in advantages it lacks in customization so what it does is basically you install the mod and then you set up your MCM 
and you can go through and choose your different stuff, whether you want a lantern or whether you want, you know, a kind of mage light. And all you have to do is click and hold your activation key, whether that's, you know, the standardized keyboard, it's E if you're using a keyboard, hold it for two, about two seconds, and it'll pop on, then hold it for two seconds, and it'll pop off. If you're using a, you know, a controller, it would be A, just hold it a little bit longer, and it'll pop on. So it really works really well, and there's some advantages to be said about this. And the main one is, is that you saw with wearable lanterns, it uses up weapon slots. And like we talked about, if you're using, you know, bandoliers or something else, it's using up those inventory weapon slots. I should call them inventory slots. Inventory slots that might be usable for something else. Quick light doesn't do that. It just pops it on. What you're getting in easy, you're giving up in customization and, dare I say it, immersion. It's fairly easy. We'll go ahead and take a look at it real fast and you can get an idea of what it does. All right, we're back in our really dark room. And even without uh, setting the MCM menu, you can see you just press and hold, it comes on. It is a vastly different type of light than wearable lanterns. It's it's kind of non-specific. It's not really centered on where the lantern is. It's it actually looks like it's kind of off to the right a little bit. If you look at the the light pool, it's more. It looks like it'd be about two to three feet off to front right if you look at it. And when you turn it off, it you know you get the little lantern right there and you. Turn it off, it goes away. If it was in the light, you would see it better. But, you know, it it works. It does its job. Let's go take a look at the MCM menu. And you have quick light right there. You see, very simple. And you have lantern, hold time. You can change it in 0.5 seconds. Activate mode. Deactivate this mod. Please turn off the light before doing it. So, you know, activate mod or deactivate mod. Light source, you saw the lantern, we'll go check out the magic. And press and hold. That throws up a little a little magic light right in front of you. If you're doing fur person, it's always kind of right there. And I was just curious, I wonder if we do an MCM. Actually, I have to do that, hang on. Turn off the light. And go back at the MCM. I wonder if you can actually see the lantern. Probably will be able to. Let me see. So I can't. I don't see a lantern in first person. So third person. There it is. So it was right next to the horn. I don't. I don't see it. So. It's kind of, you know, like I said, it's less immersive, but it is quite effective as far as what it does. It's very simple, lightweight mod, and I think it will work very well for you if you're interested in this mod. All right, files on this, now that we have an idea what it does, is one file. And you see, like I said, February 13th. Required is Skyrim, SKSE, SkyUI. Yep, we knew that. Go ahead and click Download with Manager. And when you come over here, to mod organizer. I need to, where did I put the lanterns thing? I didn't unclick it. I put it up here, wearable lanterns. I'm just going to disable it for now. Go over here, find quick light, double click to install. See it's quick light right there, manual, and right click, set data directory, set data directory again, meshes, scripts, and quick light ESP. So pretty lightweight thing. Go ahead and click, okay. And you see it right down here. It does not overwrite anything. And of course it has an ESP. The same thing goes as I kind of tested it a bit and I found that it worked just fine by putting it right next to, oddly enough, wearable lanterns, which is, now that I deactivated it, it goes right there. Right about there, it'll work fine. Loot didn't have any problems with it either way. So just, that's basically the install. This, both these are very, very simple things. So we will move on to landscape lanterns. All right, so now we're gonna add some lanterns and light sources to the exterior world to make it a little brighter and 
more cheerful and actually add a lot of flavor to the game by adding one of two mods that we're going to take a look at. And the first one we're going to do is Lanterns of Skyrim all in one by Manny GT. It is mod number 18916. It's been around since 2012. I had an update in 2013. And you can see basically it's, you know, Lanterns of Skyrim. If you don't know a lot about it, that's okay because, you know, I'm going to tell you about it right now. It has some version changes. Uh, it does use an MCM now. I'll go over that in just a second. It requires, if you want the MCM, you need at least Skyrim 1.8, SKSE, and SkyUI. Okay, so we're all set. Let's talk briefly about the MCM features, and it is very plain. When you look at this, and I'll have a, a better picture up for you so it's a little bit larger to see, you have hour to turn on and hour to turn off. That's pretty self-explanatory. Checking every. Now that is how often the script will check to see if it is daytime or nighttime. It's the set by default at 5. I would never suggest checking it that often. I would set it to about 60 every minute. And that means that sometimes the lanterns won't turn on or won't turn on, turn, turn off or turn on at the right times. But eh, who, who cares? You're actually saving your script engine quite a bit by not having it check every 5 seconds. Always on means the lights are always on. That's probably not the best idea. Debug mode, enable lanterns in villages and enable lanterns along roads. So you can click or unclick each of those as needed. The second MCM is the patches and it's going to basically give you information about what you've got going on. That's basically it. Um, that's it on the MCM. I'm going to kind of run a video right now of me just running through Riverwood, so you can kind of see the lights while I give you my impressions of it. The light posts are frequent enough that you don't feel like you're running around in the dark so much, probably a little too much. Uh, Lanterns of Skyrim adds lights to a lot of different places, and you'll find a variety of different things. Sometimes you'll find a lantern sitting on the ground or a set of candles and different things hanging from walls or from roofs and they look quite nice. Uh, the only thing that I've kind of questioned is the placement. Sometimes you'll think, well, why would anyone put a lantern on the ground there when they should be really highlighting the sign above a store or It'd something like that. But overall, it's a good variety of things. I think that it's a good one to, to take a look at and, you know, to consider. Let's go ahead and I'll kind of skip out on where we were on the video. And we will show you the files on this. Lanterns of Skyrim All-in-One MCM, or the All-in-One Non-MCM. Of course, get the MCM. It just makes your life so much easier, and you can change things really, really easily. So that's the one you want. In the instructions on the front page, it may tell you that you need the Lanterns of Skyrim All-in-One MCM and an ESP from one of the optional files. That's not entirely correct. I think that is probably just a language issue translating Italian to English. So the all-in-one MCM includes an ESM file that has the default brightness of the lanterns. The optional files are ones you would add into the game to change things around a little bit. So like Lanterns of Skyrim all-in-one, 1.5 times brighter lanterns, two times brighter preset, Clans of Tamriel preset, obviously that's for 3.1. I think it probably just changes the colors, so you may want to try it and see what happens, but I don't I didn't suggest that. Let's do this. I'll just download it with manager. I'll take a look at it for you. I'll download that into mod organizer and I'll install it for you so you can see it. All in one cold Skyrim preset, Lancha Skyrim, all in one magic lights, RCRN, Hyper Purus, all these different things. Realistic lighting overhaul, so you have a patch for that if you want to have a preset for the lanterns to match that. All in one, the goddess ENB and Vividian ENB. Just remember, Vividian ENB obviously had a major change, and this was done in 2012. So that's just something to take a look at. I'll have some before and after photos of lanterns of Skyrim as opposed to Clarilux, so we'll just go into Mod Organizer and we will install it. You can see it's right there, Lanterns All-in-One MCM Special. Go ahead and double click to install. You can see Lanterns Skyrim All-in-One, Manual, and you have a BSA in ESM. Remember this is the ESM 
and the LOS readme.txt. I, I read that it's almost worthless, but you can keep it if you want to. I'm going to click OK to install it. And you will get an ESM. It's going to be all the way up the top. Okay, Lantern Skyrim ESM. So come back over to your downloads. If you want something like Lanterns of Skyrim 1.5 or 2.0 or one of the other presets, double click to install and you see Lanterns of Skyrim all in one. Go ahead and click manual and you will have the different levels of lights that you can kind of play with on this. And what I would do is select one. Don't select them all. Well, you could select them all, but you'll have to go into your optional ESPs and do that. Let's do that. Let's just keep them all checked. Go ahead and look, looks good. Go and click OK and merge it in. Double click and go to your optional E, ESPs, and select one. Okay, just remember that Climate Terminal 5 has different lighting ones, and you may just want to go ahead and move these up. They will not change anything, but definitely know what you're getting on this. Test it out, and if you don't like it, you can get rid of all of these. But just merging it in is fine. Okay, I'm actually going to make them all default. You'll just have to trust, trust me on this. I'm just going to click close. So it's all in there if you want to play with it. Plugins on this, I would just go ahead and since it's an ESM, Loot's probably not going to mess with it too much, but whatever it wants to do with it is fine. So we will go ahead and minimize that down. Actually, I've got to disable that one first, don't I? Actually, placement on this. I almost forgot placement on this. I would place it after your other lighting stuffs and leave it right there. So if you have an ESP for one of the other brighter ones, place it after the other lighting mods you may have or before it and just play with it around or let loot handle it and it'll be fine. I, I tried it with the 1.5 brighter initially with the first set of photos and video I took and it's fine. It it works just great. So whatever what loot wants to do, loot wants to do. I'm going to deactivate the mod and we'll move on to our next one and this is actually going to be much more involved so i'm going to close it out and we're going to talk about clarilux more and brighter lights by my good eye mod number 17605 and you may be saying clarilux clarilux has save bloat and all this stuff well wait it was redone brand new for 2015 it was done in november of 2015 it's been completely fixed. It has a lot more functionality. It is, doesn't cause any save bloat. It works much better. And trust me, it's fabulous once you figure it out. Trust me. You know, we'll go through and uh, show you some of the important stuff here. When you see this here, Clarilux 2015 documentation links for easy access, that's going to take you to this page the main Clarilux page and it's Clarilux Skyrim mod union.com. Of course, I'll include this link. It will go through a bunch of different features for you. And I suggest reading it, the different features, light settings, additional light enablers. It's going to take a time. Okay. How to adjust the MCM, uh, all the MCM stuff. If you want to see it and see this video right here, I'm going to include a, annotation with a link to this video within the video, probably right over here and go to it. It's done by my good eye. It tells you about how the system works and exactly what you need to do to make it work correctly. I'll kind of go through the MCM very briefly with you in a few minutes, but you know, we'll just go ahead and let you see it. And then also installation, what to do, checklists, compatibility and performance. You can go ahead and go through these. I would suggest coming down and where's, there we go. The next one under installation is light in any tweaks. We're going to touch on that really briefly. These are the light any tweaks. These are his suggestions to how to configure your Skyrim.any under display and your Skyrim prefs any under display. As always, anytime you make changes to this, do it with caution. Make copies of your Skyrim.any and your Skyrim prefs.any, or just copies of these original entries, whatever you may have. Try these out and see what they do. So just use them with caution. It does increase the performance drain a little bit. I did not notice it because my system's really cranking right now. I don't have a lot of textures. 
So try these out, see if it works for you. If you have any performance drain, put it back to default and just let it go at that. So I just want to point these out to you. I've been, you know, testing with this. And when you see the video, you'll kind of get an idea. You know, just go through all this stuff, Clux and Dindolod, Clux with Lanterns of Skyrim, troubleshooting, uninstallation, performance reminder, all these stuff is good information. So that's a great resource to have is them to have their own page so that you can see it. So I'm going to go ahead and just go back to the main Clara Lux page while I show you the video of me running through Riverwood and you can kind of get an idea. Clara Lux doesn't seem to add as many auxiliary lanterns, lanterns everywhere. So when you see this, you know, you won't notice that there's as many lights. You'll notice that, you know, there's some, they're not placed strategically on the ground or whatever, and they don't have the variety. You won't find little lanterns stuck on the porch or a candle on a, on a railing or something. But you, what you will have is more sensical lights. In other words, you'll have a light placed near a signpost or a sign to a store. So it will, you'll look at it and say, oh, that, I can read that sign now. It also places lanterns along the road. They seem to be a little more spread out than lanterns of Skyrim, Fancy the and, but they're more strategic, and Something I think they're good. So you'll get lanterns on bridges, lamp, you know, lamp posts along the roads, and in lesser roads, you will have like little torch stands so that you'll find torches on the ground or in a little stand highlighting different places, and that's a really a nice touch. Uh, you'll find them on farmhouses and all this stuff, but I'll show you in the MCM all the different options on this. I'm going to step away, and we will go into the game. I'll explain the MCM and kind of talk, th talk you through some of the trouble spots you may encounter. All right, so we're outside of Whiterun, and you can see... This is, you know, not the shot that I'll be showing you later, but uh, we'll come down and you can see I've got issues. You can see the lamp, got lights there. You can see light posts down the road there and they look quite good. You know, I'm not going to run up and show you a lamp post, but you get the idea. So you can see there's additional lights on the wall and you can see I'm going to have, you know, you're looking at going, well, why isn't that fire brazier lighting? Well, poor old Fiona's save is so corrupted from doing all the testing things aren't quite working correctly so you know there is a fix for this if you run into this stuff things that don't look quite right i'm just going to kind of back up a little bit so you can see more of the lights that will be affected what you can do is go into your mcm and come into mod configuration and you see clara Lux. this is the main mcm you come to general You'll see, let's start over here on additional light enablers. You can see add light post to roads. This is actually at the bottom. You can see zero is one, one is half enabled, and two is all enabled. So if you think there's too many lights on the road, you can go to one and you only get half. And you have, you know, just simple toggles if you want lights on everything. And there are lights all over the place. So you can see engineers. Engineers are, you know, my good eye is the guy who did, uh, Electro City for Fallout New Vegas, and he had the Electro City engineers out there work on the lights. You may see them every once in a while. And enable the vanilla light fix. Fixes some vanilla lights when enabled. Yeah, we want that. But you can see, you know, he covers a whole bunch of stuff. On redoubts, forts, camps, just about the entire Skyrim is covered by this. And this is the important stuff. Toggle light level test mode. And if you've watched the video that I posted, for my good eyes video and it is absolutely hilarious i'll say that again what you'll need to do is enter it and then you can change things if you don't try to change things it's going to tell you do you need to change things see then you need to change things it won't let you change it and that's because you don't want to go in and out of a cell by accident if you want to change these settings you need to make sure you go into test mode you can also do the randomized settings and the light show just remember, if you want to randomize settings, go into light level test mode. And you can randomize the settings as you saw in the video. Or if you want to change the variance level and you know glow, you'll need to be in test mode. What we're going to do is actually 
poor old Fiona's script is so messed up. Her save is so trash. I need to reset all the lights. And you, if you see the braziers and fire pits not giving off light, this will fix it. So don't have your light level test mode off, or don't have it on rather, and hit reset lights. And it's going to give you the message. Exit the MCM and allow Clarelux to do its thing. Reset happens in three stages, blah, blah, blah. Whatever you do, just don't touch your keyboard. Don't do anything. Just let it do its business and click OK. And exit out of the MCM. And you'll see it start to do its work. And just kind of let it do its thing. While it's doing its thing, I'll talk about why I like Claire Lux, is that the amount of variation that you can have on it is really spectacular. And, you know, it's just going to have to... You'll just have to play with it, see how you like it, and go through it. You'll see the lights here turn off and on in a few minutes. There they all go. And they will come back on, and then you'll get a message in the end that will tell you it's all done. But, you know, just let it do its thing. Don't, don't touch it. There you go. You now have a message saying Claire Lux has been reset. Light levels return to 6 and in update interval return to 30 seconds. Some lights may be sluggish to the right depending on where you are in their cycle. Don't worry, they'll come on eventually. Go ahead and click OK. Now we can go ahead and take a look. And you can see the lights on the brazier actually work. Now you have lights there, there. So it looks a lot better. And that's kind of how we want it to look. And uh, it will change all the lights around everywhere else. It will kind of fix them for you. If you're running into weird graphic issues, you know, light balls or anything else, that's kind of one way to fix it as well. And that's just, you know, your save game is so screwed up because you mess up the lights too many times. But it looks really good. There's one last thing we need to show you on this. If you go into the MCM again, and you really don't want to do this in test mode, it won't let you. Go into general, go all the way down. You have the time for the lanterns come on and off so start time and stop time and then the update interval just like lanterns of skyrim you don't want to have this too high and actually raising it will help with your script latency problems so when you click this and you go up i'm going to put it at 60 i think 60 is a fine number i don't think you'll notice anything like that you'll get a message this is a great idea especially on lower end machines or setups with many scripted mods Okay, he'll tell you why. It's probably a good idea. Go ahead and exit out of the MCM. And once you're all set with your lights and you've got it all done, you can go ahead and save and exit. Now, if you go in and you change your light settings for whatever reason, it will reset it back down to 30. So just keep that in mind. Just something to think about. And that's it. And we will go back into game and we'll or go back out of the game and we will finish this video up. Okay, now that you got that scene, we can go ahead and look at the files. And we will go through this. Clarilux 2015.1. Download that with the manager. If you remember Manny GT's Lanterns of Skyrim was about 530. This is only 1100 kilobytes. It's really low impact as far as the size of the mod, but that doesn't really, you know, talk too much about, you know, the performance. So just keep that in mind. It is, has a little higher drain because it is, you know, having to do more things. Uh, optional files, very well covered. So you will have Clara Luxify, Dawn of Skyrim, all major cities, Clara Luxify, ELFX, Clara Luxify, Falscar, you get the thing. And here's the, Here's probably a lot of you guys are interested in this. JK Cities, JK Cities Superlight merged. And if you want to know about the compatibility, go back to the Clarelux page and look at compatibility. So you can read all that stuff. Or you can just go to the compatibility page or whatever you want to. JK City Light, Dawn of Merge, JK Skyrim Complete, TES Arena, Worms Tooth, and ignore the old versions. Those are the ones that cause problems. So for the most part, I just went ahead and as of right now, I just downloaded the main one with the manager. Let's go to Mod Organizer and we will install that bad boy. There you can see we have Clarilux, double click to install, manual, interface meshes, scripts, textures, and the Clarilux ESP. Go ahead and click OK. 
and you'll see it here at the bottom. Once again, I think having it right underneath your climates or underneath your lighting is going to have to work very well. You will not see any conflicts. And I've tested it up both ways, above and below uh, Vividian, just to see what it would do. And it didn't make a difference. It works just fine. Plugins on this, you'll see it starts at the bottom. I'm going to run loot just once. Click apply, and you see that, oh, it did move it. It moved it up here, right below Chesco's wearable lanterns. Okay, that's good. Well, that's nice to know. Doesn't have any issues either. So whatever loot wants to do, loot wants to do, and I'm going to let it do its thing. So as you probably imagine, we're coming to the end, and I'm going to give you my suggestions. Regarding wearable lanterns versus quick light, I think quick light is a good thing to have if you want a low weight, low impact thing that's very simple to use. But I really prefer wearable lanterns by Chesco. The, the light is much nicer and it looks more natural. Playing with it and using the L hotkey from my lights worked just as well as hitting anything else on my keyboard and it just, it works just great. Clarilux versus Lanterns of Skyrim. I love the variability of Clarilux and I love the ability to change things on the fly. The light post variations between the two didn't seem to make much of a difference to me, but I did prefer the placement of the different lights in the different towns. They made more sense. And I like the way you know my good eye has integrated into the game. And they, it just looks good. So. It's a lot newer. I think that uh, the problems are all gone and everyone seems to agree that it's a great mod now. So that's what I'm going to go with. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you're enjoying the series. I don't know what I'll be doing next. I hope you join me for that. My name's Cal. I'm from Dirty Weasel. And I'm signing off.